me, Dad. How far up are we? Well, put it this way. If it rains, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> Father and I are in the minister's box. By personal invitation of Cornelius Veitch himself. Don't boast, Draco. There's no need with these people. Australian author Kathy Lutt once quipped, People who say you can't buy happiness just don't know where to shop. This video is dedicated to finding out exactly how right or wrong she is on that score. Actually, we're going to look at several goodies that some people chase in order to find happiness, but that failed to satisfy in the end. The first set of things we're going to look at includes money, power, fame, health, and pleasure. Money is one of those material possessions that seem to get lots of people excited about getting more and more of it, something I could certainly identify with earlier in life. But money can't possibly make us ultimately happy for a few reasons. The first is that happiness lives in here and not out there somewhere. When people have happiness on the inside, well, it usually comes out with a smile. A second reason that money can't be our ultimate happiness is that money is used to get other things that we want. When we're generous with a friend, that can produce a nice feeling in us. Anything off the trolley, dears? No, thanks. I'm all set. We'll take the lot. Sometimes even giving money to a total stranger can produce the warm and fuzzies here. In the book version of The Order of the Phoenix, Harry is acquitted of using underage magic. Cleared of all charges. The result is that he donates an entire bag of gold to St. Mungo's Hospital. At the end of the day, money's just a tool, and by giving it away, we get something else that we want. And that might be food, a new toy, political influence, whatever. The point is that if money really were the most important thing for our happiness, we wouldn't be giving it away all the time. But it's really just a means to an end. And just because I can't help myself, here's a little montage to prove my point. I'll say you don't need no diamond rings, and I'll be satisfied. Tell me that you want the kind of things that money just can't buy. I don't care too much for money, money can buy me love. A second big ticket item that people pursue in order to gain true happiness is power. And of course, Voldemort is the terribly obvious example of this. But power, like money, is just a means to an end. It can't be what we ultimately want. Power allows us to satisfy our desires for some things, but it isn't the goal. The Dark Lord and Albus Dumbledore are arguably the two most powerful wizards in Harry Potter's world. However, they use their power for vastly different ends. Voldemort wants to take over the world and live forever on Earth. Dumbledore wants to protect those he loves. So power isn't the answer to our ultimate happiness either. We want something else. Well, let's see. Everybody likes to be loved. So how about fame as the ultimate source of our happiness? A young Ronald Weasley seems certainly set on that course. That's me! Only I'm head boy. And I'm holding the Quidditch Cup. And bloody hell! I'm Quidditch captain too! Hello, good. However, fame, like money, is outside of a person. And happiness needs to be on the inside. Fame is actually in the one who's looking at the famous person. It's not in the famous person. All those giggling girls who follow Crumb around think he's awesome and handsome and whatnot, but their thinking doesn't necessarily change anything inside of Crumb. It doesn't necessarily make him happy. Plus, if fame can make us truly happy, then our happiness depends on something that someone else can take away from us whenever they want. We can't force others to give us their attention and their praise. Hmm. Well, what about, what, what about health? That is certainly something inside of us, and when we don't have it, we're generally not pleased about that fact. Brachium. Emendo. Oh. 
Oh. Oh. Ah, yes. Well, uh, that can sometimes happen. Now, health is a good thing. When we're sick, we take lots of distasteful medicine to restore it because, well, it's worth it. I'm going for a rough night, Potter. Regrowing bones is a nasty business. <laughs> well, what do you expect? Pumpkin juice? Health, like money or power, allows us to live the life we want. But again, it's just a means to an end. There are plenty of perfectly healthy, terribly unhappy people walking around. Okay, so health isn't going to fit the bill either. What about pleasure? Pleasure, like happiness, isn't something we want for the sake of something else. We want pleasure because it's pleasurable. So pleasure is not a means to an end the way money and power and health are. And it's something inside of us. Looks like we're getting warmer. However, there are still some problems here. First, animals have bodies just like we do. If our happiness could be found in bodily pleasures alone, then our souls wouldn't have anything to contribute to our happiness. And that seems really odd. It's especially odd in light of the fact that we know what it's like to experience the joy of learning something new, of doing something right because it's right. I can't leave them! He's joking, right? And of having friends. Plus, there's the fact that Ron, who seems to indulge the pleasures of the body with more, um, how shall we say, uh, vigor than Harry or Hermione, is the unhappiest of the three of them. What is clear in the book version of the Deathly Hallows is that part of the reason Ron abandons the other two as they are searching for the Horcruxes is because he's moody and uncomfortable and Hermione's cooking is awful. And of course all that is made worse by the Horcrux that he has to carry occasionally. But did, did you think we were going to be staying in a five-star hotel, finding a Horcrux every other day? I just thought, after all this time, we would have actually achieved something. Please. Please take the whole crux. You wouldn't be saying any of this if you hadn't been wearing it all day. So Ron's frequent indulgence of carnal pleasures seems to have made him less happy in the long run than his friends. But that's a topic for a whole other video. The point is that the road to paradise isn't paved with candy or lined with butterbeer. So far in our quest for ultimate happiness, we've ruled out a number of options like money and power and pleasure and that sort of thing. But what about friendship? That is a pleasure, and it's a very human pleasure too. Something we experience in a way that animals can't, even if they do feel affection for others sometimes. And here I think we get the closest yet to the right answer. <laughs> Harry! <laughs> Bloody hell, Harry. That was not funny. There is a delight in being with one's friends that there is no substitute for. Hominum Revelio. And friendship can provide immense comfort, even when we are surrounded by darkness. We're alone. But even in friendship, there are reasons why it can't bring us perfect happiness. First, because friendships, human friendships at least, can end, either because friends fight. I saw you two the other night. Well, that's, that's nothing. Or because friends are mortal, and so they die. There's also the fact that our friends each have their own special goodness, but no single person has it all. Harry has deep friendships with Ron and Hermione, but he has other friends too. Luna, Neville, Dobby, Dumbledore, Ginny. All of them add something to Harry's life, and none of them can make Harry perfectly happy by themselves or even together as a group. But the love Harry has for his friends and the happiness they bring him point the way towards what the real answer is. And that's that, oh my gosh, uh, look at the time. Sorry folks, you'll just have to watch my next video to find out what it means to be perfectly happy. Please visit preachingfriars.org or subscribe to my YouTube channel to see all my videos or to make a contribution. Thank you for watching and remember to read lots, pray more, and keep the faith.